All right, welcome back to the channel. Devin the Dream Haney will be dropping his lawsuit against Ryan Garcia very soon as he tries to position himself for his next fight and discovers that he is very much boxed in and has done himself a great disservice. This according to a legal expert with specific experience in boxing. Let's talk about Devin Haney wanting to fight Jack Cottrell and the aftermath of this lawsuit. Let's do that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. Had a great weekend of boxing this weekend. Jack Cottrell had a fight with Regis Progre. Uh, and Jack Cottrell had beaten Regis Progre. And I think it was a good fight. Jack Cottrell, I don't think he's the, you know, a super high level fighter, but you know, he's definitely one of the upper 140 pounders. And Regis Progre who was a little bit long on the tooth, I think, and always been a bit undersized, kind of an underexperience, kind of, you know, ran his course in his career, made a good paycheck. I think he may be retiring. He also said he may go to 147, right? But after that fight, Devin Haney said and tweeted out, and Bill Haney tweeted out, that they were trying to get a fight with Jack Cottrell and that this was the fight that needed to be made, went out to the public about it, and Jack Cottrell responded to Devin and said that, hey, yeah, that would be great, mate. <laughs> said the same thing to Bill Haney. Yeah, that would be great, mate. Let's do it. So, of course, people start thinking that, yeah, okay, this is going to be a fight that that Devin can make and Jack Cottrell can make. It makes sense. Let's make, you know, make the fight. Um, they both just had a common opponent to, against each other. They uh, Regis lost to both of them. So, hey, that makes a lot of sense, right? No, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And the crazy thing is that the same person that filed this lawsuit, Bill and Devin Haney, who thought that made sense, probably do think that it makes sense for Jack Cottrell to fight him. Now, I talked to somebody about that lawsuit because I'm keeping my eyes on that law that lawsuit and see and you know to see what's going on, listening to what Bill Haney's saying, what Devin Haney, what Oscar De La Hoya is doing, and all the all the above. So had a conversation with somebody familiar, very familiar with boxing. And they said, you know, by all looks of it, this is an attempt to get Ryan Garcia and Oscar De La Hoya to settle and to also get them to have an opportunity to look at their books because they got paid in that, in that um, profit. So they want to know what all the costs are and they want to make sure that they didn't get overcharged for anything. And basically what he said is, look, if they are if they have a preliminary view of those books and those books are all clean, that and those and the expenses are all reasonable expenses and things like that, that um, the call, the the call for breach of contract is going to go away. But they didn't really even make a very solid claim for it. But he said that that's pretty much what he thinks it looks like. Agreed with what I said about the um battery the fraud and how whether or not you can actually claim that why claiming breach of contracts i won't get into all of that but just pretty much said look what i think is happening is i think that they're just trying to you know throw something up against the wall spend a little money see if they can you know get these guys to give them something you know uh give them something to kind of you know minimize their loss right because oscar de la hoya doesn't want to risk great financial loss for himself and bad publicity and all of that but I thought to myself, that's not going to make any difference. Oscar De La Hoya has had so much bad publicity that it doesn't make a difference. This man is literally out there in boxing gloves, fishnets, and high heels. So he's not somebody that is going to be overly concerned about what you think about him. I'm, at this point in time, he's numb to people saying things about him. And that doesn't change his personality, though, which is that he is, in my opinion, this is me, which is that he is going to absolutely continue to take advantage of and manipulate people if he can get away with it. However, as far as it relates to Devin Haney, he got away with it. Now, that lawsuit, though, brings us right into this conversation about Devin Haney and this fight with Jack Catterall, 
this idea that people are pushing that Jermon, that that Devin Haney can easily become the undisputed champion of the world at 140 pounds. Let me do, let me remove that delusion from you guys. Now, I'm not saying that Javante Davis, I mean that I'm not saying that Devin Haney does not have the ability to beat the champions at 140. I'm not saying that. He very well may be able to beat Pueyo. He may be able to beat Liam Paro. He may be able to beat Tiafimo Lopez. And I definitely believe he can beat Rayo Valenzuela. He very well may be the top guy, you know, able to win all of those belts. But as I continue to try to talk to people and explain to people, that's really not the only thing that you have to take into consideration when you say, hey, how can these fights get made? Like, the first thing you should do is you should look right down everybody and say, who are they promoted by all the champions? Who are they promoted and what network do they fight on? Well, let's start with Jack Cottrell, who he wants to fight. Well, he fights on the zone. He fights with Matt, Matchroom, right? At least in the last two cards. I know that before he had fought on Frank Warren's cards, but I think that was maybe like three or four fights ago. But the last several cards have all been on Matchroom cards. So Jack Cottrell is more than likely going to fight somebody that Eddie Hearn wants to fight. He wants that Eddie Hearn wants to fight him next, wants him to fight next. And who is that going to be? It's going to be the same type of person that Eddie Hearn wanted Jack Cottrell to fight last time, who was Regis Progre and who was signed to Matchroom. So you know pretty well that Eddie Hearn, once bitten twice shy, is not going to be in a mood to do a one-off fight with Jack Cottrell and Devin Haney, paying Devin Haney what Devin Haney wants so that Devin Haney, if he beats Jack Cottrell, can scoot all out of the room again with a belt or maybe even drop the belt. because he, or, But actually, Jack Cottrell doesn't have a, does not have a, um, a belt yet. So even then, it's worse because now you get Jack Cottrell beat before he has an opportunity to get a belt. No, Devin, you're not in my stable. So we're going to take care of my stable first. And we're going to run all my horses in my stable. And if you're there and I need you, then maybe I will allow you to hit on get on my matchroom track. That's what you're going to deal with. And you're going to deal that with deal. He's going to deal with that with Bob Aram as well. And he's definitely going to deal with that with the PBC. So when you guys say that Shakur, that, that Devin Haney is going to be an undisputed champion easily at 140, maybe skill wise, but politically, no. He was on the outs politically at 135 when he was with Eddie Hearn. And he wound up because they created a franchise belt, they allowed him to get a WBC belt, even though he wasn't the champion. If they had not done that, if Top Rank had not decided to do the franchise thing and let Lomachenko would have kept the WBC title, Devin Haney still wouldn't have had a chance to fight for Undisputed because he definitely wouldn't have fought Lomachenko. He wouldn't have been able to fight Camposas. He wouldn't have fought Tiafimo. He would have been sitting over there with Matchroom, and Matchroom didn't have anybody. The only person that Matchroom had was Lou Campbell, and Luke, and they gave Loma, Luke Campbell to Lomachenko, not Devin. So anyway, don't think that this is going to go away. And again, that lawsuit, he should get rid of it. But believe me, you, me, when you're looking at those promoters and those fighters that are dealing with Devin, they're looking at that ongoing lawsuit and thinking this guy, again, is litigious. And I don't know if I want to mess with him. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces. <laughs>